Did you know that there are 106,000 people on the transplant waiting list? What if all these people didn't have to wait, but got brand new organs made and customized for them? Sounds pretty cool, right? Mm, that sounds good. I'll have that. If I had to define 3D bioprinting, I'd call it a manufacturing process. Basically, you take organic and biological materials, like living cells and other biological materials compatible with our bodies, and use them as bio-ink to print an artificial structure layer by layer. And this structure would then work the same way as any human organ or tissue, an artery, for example. That is amazing. So far, we haven't been able to go as far as 3D printing entire organs, but simpler tissues like blood vessels or grafts to mend damaged ones are already out there. And the 3D bioprinting research company Organavo has already gone as far as printing the first 3D printed liver tissue and is all set to build a kidney next. So this isn't fantasy stuff, my dear viewers. We're talking about regenerative medicine that could change organ transplants forever. Now let's break 3D bioprinting down a little bit. Hi. We said it uses bio-ink, right? So how do they make ink out of living cells exactly? Well, ink consists of two main things, besides cells. There are these water-based molecules, called hydrogels, that are rich in water. And then there are chemicals that encourage cell growth and communication. Coming back to what the process of 3D printing looks like, you first get an image or a digital file of the organ or tissue that you want to print. Typically, a doctor would use an MRI or a CT scan to match the 3D print's measurements to the patient's original organ. Once you have the image, you take some cells from the original damaged organ so the body doesn't reject the 3D bioprinted one and grow the cells in a culture to make the bio-ink I just told you about. Come on, man! That's too easy! Once you're all set, you fill this ink into multiple cartridges, just like a normal 3D printer. Choose your print head and let the printer take it from there. This might take some time, depending on how complex the tissue or organ is. After the printing, some bio-ink will stiffen immediately. But for others, you'd have to use an external agent, maybe UV light or a chemical perhaps. This is called cross-linking. So at this point, you must make sure that the organ or tissue can hold together. And if this whole process is successful, the cells in the bio-ink will begin signaling to each other and work much like the normal tissue of its kind. In theory, this should be able to print any organ, but the only hurdle is to replicate the exact environment of a major organ. It's a downward steeping slope. What if the pressure of the atmosphere is too high or too low for the cells? What if they die if the nozzle is too small for them? I'd rather choose the bright side though. <laughs> so let's hope companies like Organovo, Cyfuse, Biomedical, or the many other brave ones can truly get this off the ground. And when they do, I'll be the first to break the news to you.